Welcome to Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiecka, bringing together today's leading experts to uncover ever-deepening spiritual truths and the latest scientific developments in support of the evolution of humankind. For more information on Mission Evolution Radio with Gwilda Wiecka, visit www.missionevolution.org. And now, here's the host of Mission Evolution, Miss Gwilda Wiecka. Hello. Thanks for joining us on Mission Evolution. We're coming to you on Exxon TV and Simul TV from our broadcast studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, bringing the latest evolutionary information from today's leading experts. This hour, we'll explore past life, fact or fiction. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, I was Cleopatra in a past life. It leaves one wondering just exactly how many Cleopatras there were. Is there really such a thing as past life? If so, is there more to it than meets the eye? Can we carry damage from past lives that impact our current life? Does past life regression really work? With us this hour to examine the mystery of past lives is a gentleman we've had on the program before, Vaughn Brashler. Vaughn is the author of several books on conscious development, ranging from time travel to visualization, energy healing, and thought power. His latest book is an ancient wisdom scroll entitled Past Lives. Vaughn is a former award-winning journalist and faculty member of the Omega Institute for Holistic Studies. You can find Vaughn on his Facebook page, facebook.com slash vbrashler. Vaughn, thank you for joining us on Mission Evolution. Thank you, Gwilda. Good to be with you. It's a real pleasure. It's a real pleasure. Um, Vaughn, how on earth did you first become interested in past lives? How on earth, indeed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> on earth. Yeah, there's a good starting point. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm one of these odd people, I guess, that somehow was born with some memories of a past life. There are many of us who seem to remember a past life. A lot of people claim they do not. A lot of people probably uh, have had inklings or flashback memories, and they've been suppressed because these are just considered not appropriate. It's not provable. But a lot of people seem to have this. Then we have the case of people who have intimate dreams, lucid dreams of past lives, and people who've had uh, uh, deja vu experience that, that might be considered past lives. People indeed who have gone and actually gone into regression, uh, which would be, I guess, a kind of guided meditation. Uh, in my case, I just seem to remember past lives. Amazing. So um, for our purposes here, would you define past lives for us? I think there's a lot of confusion on the topic. Oh, no. The, the, this is this is why I, I wrote the Ancient Wisdom um, a Scroll, because there are different views on this. And I think they're all legitimate uh, points to be argued and considered. There's different ways to evaluate what is a past life or past lives. Some people think that you might have been a crocodile in your past life or that you might be a cow in your next life. Some people think that, in fact, you this is this is your past life. And when you go to heaven or when you go to paradise or nirvana, this will have been your past life. So for those two people, those people who think that they're going to go to the promised land and live with the, the heavenly host, that they, they, too, will have had a past life. This is it. There, then there are people who believe that um, that, that 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 we've all lived uh, and experienced these things together as a collective uh, consciousness. Uh, so there's all different views uh, on, on past lives. And then there's a view of uh, J. Krishnamurti who said that uh, reincarnation is an untrue fact. Take your choice. That'll be confusing right there. An untrue fact. Hmm? Yeah. And what, what's what's meant by that exactly? Well, this is my favorite, and I have to have to admit I am a fan of Krishnamurti. Who else would start a, a worldwide uh, organization, a religion, if you will, and then disperse it and say you're on your own, do your own, do your own thinking. It isn't me. Do your own thinking, and um, and and he said that it's an untrue fact. Now, now he lectured around the world to throngs of thousands of people. And he would take questions at the end of his presentation, and he would he would sometimes t 
turn around and say, no, that's not the question you want to ask. This is the question you meant to ask. <laughs> and finally, toward the end of, of his organization, before he dispersed the crowd to find their own way, he said, I'm often asked whether, whether reincarnation is a true fact. I will say this, reincarnation is an untrue fact. And they said, what, what, what? He said, reincarnation is an untrue fact. He says, you're reincarnated every moment of your life. Now, I think this is the greatest takeaway, at least for me, that, that life is constantly changing, that the universe is filled with dynamic change and, and change is constant. And we have to, we have to go with it or, or, or we simply are no longer part of the picture. We atrophy. we atrophy. So, so, so you see, he was saying that your body will re will regenerate itself. That every seven days your blood is new, every month or so you have all new cells in your body, and that you're constantly changing. In fact, Gwilda, we're not the same two people as who started this conversation a few moments ago. It seems like things are accelerating too. Some mornings I wake up and I go, "Who was I yesterday?" <laughs> Exactly. You know, you, you bear a resemblance to that person. That person is you and yet you are different. Yeah. So there's there's a school of thought that in fact, there's some proof that um, we actually we didn't realize this for a while, but we actually can genetically take on damage from our ancestors. So that, then it tra that, that particular damage travels, travels down the family line. Can that have anything to do with reincarnation in that we're not necessarily living a past life, but we have access to a past life of one of our relatives? Well, when you say relatives, I, I mean, I do believe in the concept of a group soul, but it might not be your biological mother or father or grandparents, you know, and I, and I think that you do, you do inherit some, some genetic qualities from these people. There's a lot of research and has been for years about the so-called gray matter that that all living creatures seem to inherit, and and in memory of, of what you know, fire bad, snakes scary, that kind of thing. Um, but um, you know, I, I I think that I think that on a deeper level, we're also soul creatures or creatures of spirit, and 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 and, and in that sense, we've we've inherited from our group soul. Or, the, or, or even the people that we live with now in a community, in this physical life, we inherit some group karma, which in fact will it will 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 change our futures. So the the point I was trying to get at is: Are we really? Um, did we really exist in a persona in a past life, or is it memories being passed down, whether through the spiritual family or through the genetic line? Well. If you're asking me, I mean, I think that we've all lived many, many lives in the past and, you know, they might have been very similar. There's a tendency, it's, it would seem from the people who have have regressed or have had these 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 documented cases of, of, of past life recall that um, that in fact they they do have. Um, uh, some memory of having been, in, in my case, like a man several times. Very seldom does it cross over, but I mean, I remember being a woman once, you know, and and I think that that moreover, we just come back to what's comfortable for us. You know, I th think you have to think of people as like, you know, we're we're more than simply physical beings. We're we're spiritual beings, and 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 we have a soul, and 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 in in the in the key part of us is our is our consciousness which is our electromagnetic life force if you will and each one of us has this consciousness it's universal it's in all of life and it, it is eternal it is an intelligent consciousness uh and it it it, it, it precedes us and it supersedes us do you think that that consciousness once we cross over from one life you know, leave one lifetime, go back to source, come back to, an, to another lifetime. Yeah. Do you think that consciousness remains the same or do we get a different uh, set of frequencies coming when we come back? Well, early on, um, when I worked in the publishing 
end of things, I, I worked at uh, Llewellyn with uh, Dr. Michael Newton, and he wrote uh, The Destiny of Souls and Journey of Souls. And it was based on his years and years of, of clinical research and, and uh, uh, as a psychotherapist. Uh, and when he retired, he had all these odd cases, he called them. But there was a, a, a something that unified them. They all seemed to remember a life between life. And they all remembered getting together as a group. And, and, and the odd thing was that, that he talked about the cluster groups or the, or the soul groups that one would reincarnate with, which would be approximately a dozen people, more or less, and that you would get together with them between lives, uh, those of you who weren't currently incarnated in a physical body, and you would, you, you would, you would jointly discuss and review your past life in, in, in context of what were your goals and what were your primary missions. And, 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 and then you would, together with them, self-program your next life. That was one of the takeaways of his book, Journey of Souls. So if, we're, if we start complaining about this life, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Well, that's it. You know, and the concept of uh, Lords of Karma kind of go out the window when you consider that it's just, you know, the same dozen people that have always been your sisters and brothers and mothers and neighbors. Oh, and so they don't change. They, they stay from lifetime they, to lifetime. They, they, you, 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 we reincarnate with this same group over and over and over. Now you might not encounter them all. And, you, and, and if you do, you might not recognize them, you know, but, but, but yeah, it's the same group. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll actually like play off each other. There's like, um, there's like kind of, almost like a committee approach to programming your life. Pretty amazing. Um, we're about out of time in this segment, but on the other side, I'd like to discuss how do we recognize our soul team um, when Ooh. we bump into them? Yeah, that's pretty interesting because if yeah. we have something to do together. How can you tell who's who, right? Indeed. Yeah. So we will have a, a quick uh, station turnaround here. And on the other side, we will be back. We'll return shortly. Don't go away. This is Mission Evolution www.missionevolution.org Hello again. This is Mission Evolution, missionevolution.org. With us this hour discussing concepts of past lives is Vaughn Brashler. You can find Vaughn on his Facebook page, facebook.com slash vbrashler. Vaughn, we were going to talk about, oh, you were mentioning there's soul groups that we reincarnate, maybe about 12 of us, again and again and again at the same yeah. time um, with a mission of, of sorts. How do you recognize these people? How do you know you're in the presence of a member of your soul group? Well, it is it is kind of startling, you know. Um, I mean, I have actually recognized at least one, I would say two, maybe three of my group. And I think that's kind of highly unusual. But I think that that given, you know, that we're all kind of doing what I'm doing here today, it, it kind of makes sense, you know. And and um, so we've been kind of out there, you know, not hidden. <coughs> and um, when you when you meet one, you will know you will know her. You will know him. Uh, in my case, um, I was entering a banquet hall. Uh, this goes back in the early 80s. And I and I'm walking into this busy, busy banquet hall, and it's so noisy, all the people talking, nobody's seated, the, the wait staff is setting up the tables, that's noisy. There's an intercom system blaring music, that's noisy. You can't hear anything, all, these, all this noise. And suddenly I enter the room and everything stops. I mean, the noise stops, it goes dim, and I hear only one voice across the hall. And it's a woman whose back is to me, and she's facing someone who's in the corner. And I started walking toward her, and I'm still hearing her. And as I got within, oh, 25, 20 feet, she swivels around. And she said, what? Why are you shouting at me? And I said, I was not shouting at you. I was not. And so we said, oh, this is very strange indeed. So we started hanging out together, and... 
And I was telling her like, oh, I have strange dreams. You know, I have strange dreams. I used to be a farmer and a poet in Wales in the 17th century. And I would, I would take my team into town and sell my goods. And I'd work the farm and I'd write poetry on the side. And one day there was a terrible storm and I went out to save what bit of the crop I could before the storm took it all. And I went out there and, and there was a big flash. And that's all I remember. And she said, she said, oh, I can fill it in. She said, after you were struck by lightning, I had to deal with your horrible mother. And she treated me very badly, too. And yeah, and she she knew the story of our lives as well, better than I did. You know, she could fill it in. You know, it's like, so we, we actually said, oh, my God, this is incredible. We built a life together. So we went before a group of people from the Berkeley Psychic Institute. And uh, they did what's called a quartz. Uh, chakra reading where you stand in front of a, a, a committee of people behind a table and they read your chakras and and and, and reading your what they called the rose chakra they could tell you your your past and we we did it together and they said you want us to read you simultaneously we said yes and they said why and i said i think we've lived a life together and then they started all to laugh. There were like five of them. I said, we said, what's funny? She said, and the leader said, oh, you've lived many lives together. <laughs> so, yeah, we remember some of them and we don't remember others, you know, and it's probably good that most people are born with this lack of memory because it would be painful to bring back all of the, um, the baggage, the emotional baggage from a past life. Because all of our lives here on earth, of course, end in death, the separation, it's sadness. You lose people, you know, and there's unfulfilled dreams. So all of that, you come back to that and you say, oh, my gosh, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I think, it, go ahead. Have there have there been any studies? I mean, I've heard about how um, people have had what they thought was a past life yeah. and documented what they were aware of about it and yeah. then been able to go back in history and find different people that was yeah. in there or different situations or different happenings. Mm -hmm. Have you reached the research that at all? How common yeah, is there that? are there are there are some excellent case studies of serious researchers. The best is probably by the Canadian uh, Ian Stevenson, and it's called Children, I think it's called Children Who Remember Previous Lives. And it, it's all children. And, and the interesting thing about doing uh, research with children is, you know, they haven't had time to queue up, you know, and study and, and, be, and been socialized into one thing or another. They just remember what they remember. Like when I was five years old, I went to school. The things I told them about my previous life made their heads spin you know and they thought i was a terrible liar and I should go home and tell my mother what i did you know but it's like oh no this is the way kids are i mean a lot of kids are born with memory and 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 and, and stevenson found a whole lot of them and that's considered like the gold standard the stevenson book there's also tom rucker uh tom schroeder's book old souls these are excellent studies of, so how what, what advice would you give to a parent? Because I can remember uh, my son in particular relating this long dissertation of what he used to be or do. Yeah. And of course, as a parent, you just think their little imagination is going wild. How yeah. can a parent recognize when they're actually um, speaking of a, a life? How can they um, not invalidate it and, and yet still prepare them for the world that will? I, I can only tell you my own personal experience with my own son. When he was young, we were washing the car one day. I remember it very distinctly. He was very little. And he said, you don't remember when I was your father, do you? Whoa. I said, what? He says, he says neither do, does my daughter. I said, who's your daughter? He said, my mother. I said, you, you mean I married my sister? <laughs> he said, well, yes, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Which explains a lot of why we squabbled, I suppose, brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with an odd thing. But you, I think you run into you run into people from you know your cluster group or people you've known in a past life, 
you know, and, and yeah, there's a lot of unresolved drama from the past, but your cluster group, according to Dr. Newton, is, is a group that supports you and, and they have essentially the same approach you do. It's kind of like you have the same, you have the same modus operandi. I, that's the case with my friend and, and, and the other two that I met for my group. Is, is so when, when, go ahead. So, so when you, when you come back in a, in a group, you know, a lot of people are of the mind that we just keep coming back till we learn our lessons. Yeah. Other people are of the mind that we come because we have a particular goal in mind, a particular thing to achieve, yeah. uh, to better the world or whatever. Yeah. Um, so what's your take on those? Both of the above, you know, I mean, you do have a, a, a mission, you're, you're, you're programmed, you're self-programmed, let's face it, and you're self-programmed and you're motivated, but you come back and you forgot, you forget so much. You, we forget so much when we're born. In fact, Plato wrote a theory of recollection because so many people are born with no memory, but a few people are, you know, these are the people that suddenly can speak another language at birth or they can play the piano, or they know, in my case, poems that, you know, were written, you know, hundreds of years ago, and, and they just know this, you know, and, and it's like, how do you know it? You know, it's like, well, there's nothing in my physical memory bank, so therefore it must be from beyond this physical life that I've recorded this information. So, so tell me about the poetry um, that you remembered. Well, it would be metaphysical, <laughs> not terribly good. <laughs> also thought I was an artist. I was probably a better farmer than, uh, than I was a poet. But, but you know, we're drawn to these lives, you know, and this is good and this is bad, you know. It's like you, you can't continue to live the, these lives. I mean, none of the lives that I remember were, were exciting like Cleopatra or Napoleon. You know, maybe we all share some consciousness with these as, as Carl Jung said in his theory of the collective unconscious, that we, in a sense, all were um, um, Marie Antoinette. Maybe we all were, you know, because no, we, we weren't all physically her, but we shared the consciousness of her, or we do now. And there's, there's also a, another whole rabbit hole about archetypal representations yeah. um, that we align with the frequency through the archetype. Um, does that play yeah. in here? I think so. I think so. And and I think, you know, a lot of these theories are, are, are really, really probably pretty, 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 I won't say spot on, but, you know, in the right direction, you know, like you have like everyone's born under a, a birth sign, right? And everybody is born with a number, right? Numerologically. Moreover, people are born uh, by a certain ray, you know, the, the seven ray theory, that, that there's energy that drives us forth. And I think that these things probably will not significantly change from lifetime to lifetime because this is your signature. This is who you are. I may, I may be dead wrong about this, but I think that we keep coming back and trying to hit the mark like the understudy for uh, Othello. We're always ready to go, but we're not quite up to speed yet. So does do, um, in your opinion, obviously, do um, people come back under the same sign, the same astrological sign, or do I, they try different ones out? I know that astrologically, a lot of astrologers would say that that you live, um, what is it, seven, seven lifetimes in all 12 signs and you get a 72. I don't know. I think that I think that you tend to come back very much the same as you were. You no, know, whether, you know, you're always an air sign or always a water sign. That's probably more the case, you know. If we're self-programmed, it seems to me that you're going to try to select a, a body that would be born uh, relatively, maybe not the same astrological sign, but the same basic air, air sign or water sign, your same element sign, because you'll have an orientation that way. So you just brought up another interesting rabbit hole, and that is um, the... Um, coming back in these signs uh, or basically the elementals yeah. um, how do we manage to get back all at the same time and we're just about out of time in this segment but um, 
we get together and you know choose a body at the right time together and and then go in or well according to, to the people that M michael newton regressed and he said go back as far as you can he thought maybe they go back to age three and remember mm -hmm. a ta temper tantrum or, or falling on the fl floor and they went back to before they were born uh, they 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 would um uh, not always come back at the same time but they would they would choose they would a lot of people in your soul cluster group would choose to come back at the same time and maybe at the same place hmm. you know because Amazing. you have good working relationship i have somebody like that and i call her my twin flame <laughs> you know <laughs> well it is that magic moment we're going to need to take another station break vaughn and i will be right back to continue mm -hmm. our discussion so stay right there this is mission evolution www.missionevolution.org. Hi there. This is Mission Evolution, missionevolution.org. Our guest this hour is Vaughn Brashler. You can find Vaughn on his Facebook page, facebook.com slash vbrashler. Vaughn, we were just getting into... Um, what, how the soul group comes back at the same time. But there was another interesting aspect about this, and that was choosing a body. You mentioned choosing a body, choosing a body. Choosing a body. Yeah. Now, um, do we just kind of float around and find the genetics that best line up with what we want to do this time? How does that work? Well, I think everyone makes their own choices, and they're obviously there are compromises because there are many variables. Uh, I can tell you that my neighbor's cat, used to be my cat, used to be my best friend's cat. It's the same cat. And the reason I think this is because it it knows where all the good toys are. It, it knows how to get it into the house through the cat door. It didn't have to be told any of these things. It has the same mannerisms, the same quirks. It carries its body the same way. Um, answers to the old names. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that a lot of people have that experience with a dog or a cat. And and if it if it's true of a dog or a cat, why not with a person? So I, I think that I think that we we yeah I, I think so. I I've also heard the theory that uh, dogs and and cats have like a soul or a, a common soul group by species that they yeah. can glean information from. That would be a little different, wouldn't it? Yeah, that is kind of a, an ancient concept. Um, I, I don't I don't believe in it. I think that. I think that they're exactly like us. I think that they they do belong to a, a group soul, but I think we also belong to a group soul. In fact, I think there's only one group soul, and we all belong to that one one group soul. I think that it, moreover, that according to the the stories that Doctor Newton said, people uh, remember their life between lives as being a fleck of light, and you'll hang out with your dozen people or however many are between lives. And you'll be sitting there like flecks of light, but you identify each other because you know who you are. And we're all like uh, sparks of one great eternal flame. Now, now I didn't just come up with that. I mean, I mean, this is Gnostic. This is this is this is 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 is, is, is in a lot of our religions. The concept that 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 all creation is light. We're light, and and we're just we're part of the light. So um, let's talk a little bit about regression. I think that's pretty mm. fascinating. Yeah. What exactly is past life regression? How is it done? Yeah, past life regression is usually done with a psychotherapist or psychologist who will take you back to a, a, an earlier time. And, and it would be earlier than your birth moment in this physical life. And, and, and you would do this through basically um, guided meditation. And it could, it could be done as a group too. Uh, you know, I've, I've been through group meditations. Uh, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> you know, it's a very personal journey. You know, so so the idea is that you're going to regress somebody and take them back uh, through um, meditation to to or, or hypnosis, if you will, to to an earlier an earlier life, and 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 that you will remember. You know. So this is is really, if it's not hypnosis, if it is hypnosis, it's, it's deep hypnosis. If it's meditation, it's deep uh, meditation because you're completely putting the physical body and mind to sleep 
and you're asking the internal spirit to remember everything. And the internal spirit, of course, is eternal. It is pure energy. It is conscious energy. And it does remember, and it, it, it knows all. So when you're, when you're in this process, is the person, does the person then retain the experience of the regression? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, because you're quite, you're quite, uh, you're quite aware. It would be similar to a lucid dream. Another approach to do this is through lucid dreaming, in fact. So, so if those who people joining us today who have experienced a lucid dream, you know, they're very vivid and they're very impactful, meaningful, and they're memorable. And you, you definitely remember a lucid dream. And so it is with uh, past life regression. You just remember it. In dreams, we have um, some, some of it is literal maybe, and, but a lot of it is metaphorical in nature. Does, does that relate to past life recall? Well, there are different kinds of dreams, of course. Now, the common dream is kind of, you know, lending itself more to, um, you know, a metaphorical uh, experience where you're, you're uh, playing all of, of the parts <laughs> and, you're, and you're, you're doing it out of your memory, out of, out of your physical, mental, mind memory. And uh, you're reliving what you, what you know and think to be true. And then you're 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 analyzing it as you as you play the tapes, the recordings, and and these these kind of common dreams are are, are usually analytical dreams. They're dreams out of your your physical brain or memory. So, like uh, a form of processing. Processing, processing. These are the dreams where you run but you can't get anywhere, or or you're naked and you go into the dining room. Those kind of dreams, you know, fun dreams. And they're usually dreams, uh, you know, where you are trying to process questions you can't resolve during your more um, wakeful moments. Well, you know, unfortunately, you're having a dream where you're half asleep and half awake. And this is the way most people dream. And these are very common dreams. But a lucid dream is something quite different. And um, I'm working on a book now, Programming Lucid Dreams, where people can actually try to program uh, a more meaningful, impactful dream that would be beyond this. It would be an out-of-body journey of the soul. So given that, <laughs> could mm -hmm. they use that to access past lives without yes. being uh, put under yeah. hypnosis and stuff? A absolutely. And, and I think this is a very legitimate use of, of dream work, which is an ancient uh, a way of self-discovery, dream work. It goes all the way back to Egypt and, and earlier. And um, and uh, this is, uh, lucid dreaming is a very good way to self-regress you, yourself. You could also self-regress yourself in meditation in, you know, just lying on your, on your sofa or in a perfect lotus position, uh, which we would call meditation. There's, um, uh, is there a problem with, when we access these past life memories, some of it can be traumatic. Um, mm -hmm. There probably is a bit of an identity crisis that goes mm -hmm. along with it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So is it advisable to do it yourself or would it be better to be with a professional? Personally, I would prefer for myself to do it all by myself because I think the, the processing after the experience is got to be very subjective. I really don't want someone telling me that, uh, you know, what, which archetype I'm, I'm, I'm exhibiting, you know, I, I really don't need, um, the psychology that's going to come with it. It's a very personal experience. Um, we are our best dream interpreters because they're very, very personal experiences. Yes, and would would you same thing with past lives then? Yes, same same thing with past lives. So so what, what you're it's very much like in a lucid dream. Well, however you get there to experience and relive, and go to the past life to relive it, past life recall is is very personal, very impactful, and it has great meaning to you. No one else. Does um the you know we get bumps and bruises in every life, but does extreme damage um 
po follow us from life to life? In other words, if we were yeah. extremely traumatized in one life, does that trauma follow to the next? Yeah. And you were talking before about, you know, um, things that we bring forward with us, you know, I think that there are um, just as when you have, let's say you're in an auto accident years later, you seem to have recovered, but there's, there's what's called um, body memory and where every cell in your body seems to be triggered by certain things that, that recreate the event. And, 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 and the body has a memory of it and it carries itself with this memory, which, which, which can be um, psychologically difficult, you know, and, and, and I think that we do bring with us some memory, which we carry uh, like, like bricks in a, in a backpack with us. Well, if, if, if it's body memory, though, we leave that body, it becomes ash. Yeah, 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 we, I know. We go into spirit, I we know. come back. So how is it carried forward? Okay, okay, good point. Now, okay, so I saw this one coming, Gwilda. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it, th there are, are subtle energy bodies which, which basically extend from the core of your physical dense body outward, you know, thinking of the Eastern spiritual model. So there's your emotional body, your mental body, your causal body, your buddhic body, your your soul body, your atma. All of these, all of these subtle energy bodies, are invisible and non-physical, and they all impact the physical body. So what I'm saying is, you know, there is a conscious memory uh, when when the spirit comes forward into a new life, and that conscious memory comes with you in your spirit and the conscious your consciousness exists on all chakra levels on all subtle body levels so your emotional body your mental body your causal body your 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 spirit but all of these bodies including your physical body have a consciousness and a conscious memory and and that's as a result of your your eternal spirit coming forward into and in, in, in dwelling within, inside of us in this physical life. So when we incarnate, when we pick that body and incarnate, yeah. do we bring yeah. that etheric body with us? Yes, that etheric body is, is, is your energetic uh, blueprint, uh, your double. It, 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 it is a silhouette of your physical body. So that's going to change the characteristics of the little baby body, <laughs> the physical one, slightly, yeah. because it they have to get along, right? They have to, to attune to each other. Absolutely. So so this is this is a really important point. And in, in, in for people that really want to get into meditation, they really need to think about this somewhat. There needs to be some holistic harmony within your total being. That is to say that your mind, your body, your your inner spirit need to be in in sync with each other or, or there's going to be inner conflict. Interesting. Well, it's again that magic moment. We're going to take another station break. Please stay with us as Bon and I continue to explore past lives and reincarnation. This is Mission Evolution, www.missionevolution.org. Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution, missionevolution.org. This hour, our special guest is Vaughn Brashler. You can find Vaughn on his Facebook page, facebook.com slash vbrashler. Vaughn, we were talking about how um, when the spirit incarnates into the body, the spirit actually brings the ethereal bodies to the physical body. Yeah. So do, would, would the physical body then end up being quite different if a different spirit was the one to incarnate? Ooh, I suppose so. You know, I always think of the physical body we select. It's, you know, as, as you're, you're looking at all the possibilities. You say, well, I want to live in wherever I want to live. So, let's say I want to live in Windsor. Good place to live. Okay. So then I say, well, um, okay, so I want to live um, 
uh, on this street, okay, and and I want to live, you know, by a certain grove of trees, and you know, and you get very specific. And I want to, I want to live with a family that's musical, you know. And it, it, pretty soon, you know, it, you can just. This is probably explains why some people reincarnate so infrequently, you know, and some people just like copying all the time, you know, there are people that actually remember having been in like World War Two, you know, and and in 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 a few years later they're here again. And some people their last memory was the Trojan War, you know, it's like, I mean, this is it is, you know, so we don't all apparently come back uh as frequently uh as, as a group, you know, there there's a variation. So I think some people are very picky where they go and you, you tend to pick a body that's going to work for you. And um, it's a, it's a, it's a selection process. But I think that when you bring your etheric body with you, your soul body, your, this consciousness is going to have some bearing on how that body looks, you know, and how it develops and that's how it, how it develops. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's that imprint, you know. It's that, it's that imprint, yeah. It's a bit of a marriage. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this brings up another interesting question. Is um, We're talking as if past life follows the timeline that we're here in this, on, in this reality. Yeah. Does past life actually, could it jump to future? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. What's that so, look like? So, so, you know, I mean, um, th there really is no past or future in the greater scheme of things there's only how we tend to measure time now here which which is a convenience for us um it, there are many possibilities including including parallel lives including you know um incarnating on a on another on another world you know yeah uh, you know it's very likely I and mean, there have been a lot of people that seem to remember having lived in another world um, as in on another planet yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Venus or Mars or something. I mean, it's a dead planet now, but somebody probably lived there once. It might have been us, you know, and, and yeah, absolutely. So, so then this leads us to wonder, <laughs> if we reincarnate on different planets, do we reincarnate in, in totally different forms? I mean, could we be in totally energy form on one planet and a more physical form on another? Any uh -huh. there? Aha, uh -huh. this is how I see the future, but this is only with through my little squinty eyes. I, th I think that I think that even if, if this world were blown up, sadly, with all the craziness that's ensuing now, that, that we would still live. But we might not live here. You see, we're going to live somewhere, you know, and, and, and this is just a very nice place to live. But, but our, our spirit is eternal and our life goes on and on and on through many lifetimes and w there will always be uh, an us and there will always be a place for us. It will be adaptable. Well, there's, you know, quite a few people in this day and age, and I don't know if it's because everybody's seeing the doomsday <laughs> um, and would like to believe otherwise, but a lot of people uh, are starting to say, well, I'm from um, the pale." Pallades, Pallades or, yeah. yeah, and I came with a group from the Pallades, and yeah. you know, um, and they're being drawn together with this premise. Uh, is that what's playing out here? Well, it, I mean, in some cases, it might be um, it might be uh, truthful. In some people, they might be just like playing a game. I don't know. I, I met a lot of people that are, they're absolutely convinced they're vampires. I'm pretty sure they're not, you know. So I think people do get imaginative, you know. And um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's entirely possible that we reincarnate from group as as a group from various places. You know, uh, I'm 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 a theosophist, and I know that our one of our founders, Elena Bla, Bla, Blavatsky, believed um, apparently in in the premise that uh, many of us have lived on other planets and 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 come here as a group. You know. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, we're, we're aliens or anything. I think we're people, you know, and, and this is, okay, we might have had a different, might have had a different structure physically, you know, in previous lives. But, but I think that's true of all of us, you know. It's interesting that, that people in the West tend to think that 
the concept of reincarnation by and large as accepted by us today in the West came from um, India. But in fact, in India, as I understand it, might be wrong, there's only one primary sect in India that, that believes in reincarnation as we do. The others tend to believe in transmigration of the soul, which, which is that you might have been a crocodile. Or that was might, going to be my next question. Is it always a, human? <laughs> you might have been a cow. You might have been a cobra, you know. Um, but, but the, but the uh, let's see, the, 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 um, the, the Krishnas, the Krishnas believe that, that if you were, uh, you're a person now, you were a person then, you'll be a person next time. And, and, and I think in most cases, that's absolutely, absolutely true. Because if you were a cow, it would be more comfortable for you to reincarnate again as a cow. If well, you it were depends a... on what the what the butchering was like. But I well, I that's just that to... that's true. You say, well, I know how to be a cow, you know. And if you were a person, you say, well, I I think uh, I kind of would, you know, I'm comfortable being a person. I don't know that I want to be a cobra. But uh, I'm, you know, I think it's possible. So if we're going to change gears here a little bit, how does spirit walking, dream walking, and vision quests relate to past lives? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that in, in, in the vision quest and in, in spirit walking, you know, you, you, you can explore the past and the future. And, 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 and in doing that, in walking into the past and the future, you might just discover yourself there. <laughs> um, I, I think this is a very interesting thing about about spirit walking or or out of body travel if you will you know and, and in the shamanic world you know they're, they're very good at this they're very good at going into a deep trance leaving the body going to the past uh exploring the past their past specifically going into the future their future specifically seeing what the future holds i think this is a very very um uh global approach to to what we see happening say in uh, among the mystics in, in india and in and, and, and in the east uh, in buddhism and in in, in 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 hindu religion where they go into a, a deep uh, meditation the the same the same basic premise is to leave the body and explore the past the future and find yourself always looking for yourself the 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 great goal in all of these quests is to find yourself and to try to get a thread of who you are grab a hold of that thread and discover why you're here and and how you fit in the grand scheme of things and what you should be doing with your life so the a lot of the indigenous peoples are really big on the ancestors yeah in this case are we our own ancestors <laughs> that we're looking for Sure. <laughs> I'll go with that. Sure. Sure. You know, I say like, well, I was my own grandfather. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, all, you know, I think that we're all the time, in fact, visited by, by, by voices of the past and, and from the future that are, are checking in on us. There is, there is no time or space in the spirit realm, you know, when you, when the shaman steps out into dream walking or the mystic steps out in meditation or you leave the body in regression or, or lucid dreaming, uh, you are in fact um, exploring um, infinite possibilities. Amazing. Vaughn, it's about that time in the program where I have to ask you, what's your mission? My mission? Your is, mission. Is to be here talking to people. <laughs> it's been been very made me very very yes my 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 twin flame said now is the time to talk um, so i mean for a long time you know i i worked in the publishing business facilitating all the all of these wonderful books and then i thought well you know what it's just time to tell my own story and i can only tell my own story i I, I'm not clever like Ian Stevenson. I haven't interviewed all these children. I can only tell my own story. And if it resonates with people, um, that's why I tell it. So I'm glad to be with you. <laughs> I'm more glad to have you. So tell me, what can be learned um, or gained from playing around with our past lives that can be practical and help us now? Exactly. I think it's very important to discover who you were and 
and who you should be, speaking of past and future, because I think that the, your life mission, your destiny, destiny of your soul, as, as Newton would say, is, is, is the most important thing of all. We don't come here just to have some good experience, hear some good music, and, 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 and grow some beautiful flowers. We are here for, obviously, to accomplish something. And, and we've almost every one of us forgotten it, what it is. And, and it's important. Uh, because this this goal never changes, this mission never ends. It's it's like a carousel that the music stops and you simply get on another horse and ride again. And 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 we we must discover who we are and why we're here. And you feel that the um, that the mysteries of that is held within our past life recall. I do, I do very much so. Pretty fascinating. Well, unfortunately, it's about the end of our show time together, Vaughn. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. <laughs> our guest this hour has been former award-winning journalist and faculty member of the Omega Institute for Holistic Studies, Vaughn Brashler. His latest book is An Ancient Wisdom Scroll entitled Past Lives. You can find Vaughn on his Facebook page, facebook.com slash vbrashler. This has been Mission Evolution with Gwilda Wiecka. For more information or to enjoy past archived episodes, visit www.missionevolution.org. And please be sure to join us right here next time as this mission continues, bringing information, resources, and support to our evolving world. Mm -hmm.